Hello and welcome to the Cryptocurrency News Channel. I'm going to talk about a topic today, which I hope doesn't happen, and that is if Ripple and XRP lose to the SEC, because that would be devastating to all uh, cryptocurrencies out there and could just annihilate altcoins, at least in the United States. Now, we know that John Deaton um, actually thinks that uh, XRP is going to win. I give them like a 50-50 chance of winning losing because the other lawyers like Preston J. Barn, who is actually a lawyer that wrote this article for Coindesk, he is a dual qualified lawyer in both the UK and the United States, which means he has um, he, he can practice law both here and the UK. And he is actually um, kind of a technology lawyer and he advises specifically in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and consumer internet sectors. So it is kind of like up his alley. And he actually thinks uh, Ripple will eventually lose the case. And we're going to go over why his um, reasoning differs from John Deaton's. But also we're going to go over what steps Ripple can actually take if they actually lose the case. And like what are the options if they lose the case. Because I, like I said, I think it's 50-50. Now, John Deaton thinks the LBRY case doesn't really impact the Ripple case because it is in a different circuit. The LBRY case is in the first circuit. And the Ripple case is in the Second Circuit. And um, the SEC basically found the right circuit with um, the right judge that was favorable to the SEC for the LBRY decision. Ripple's judge is more neutral, and it looks like they even favor Ripple some because the SEC keeps on pulling shenanigans that they're basically getting tired of. So, like, since they're in different circuits, they have slightly different applicable rules. And basically... Um, Essentially, the judge in the LBRY case said it doesn't really matter if the companies marketed the uh, the so-called security in question or not, which didn't really favor LBRY because LBRY didn't really market the securities per se, and neither does Ripple. But he said if it, it didn't really matter, as long as there was some kind of expectation of profit or most people bought it for profit. Which, by the way, is the same way that a lot of the judges in the Kick case and the Telegram case ruled. But Kick and Telegram and EOS, for that matter, are different because they had an ICO. But it should be noted that in the ruling for Kick and Telegram, they didn't really go over the ICO all that much. They just said because people, most people who buy the coin are buying it as an investment and not really for utility, uh, therefore, it can be in realistically considered a security. And this is why main reason that Preston J. Byrne actually has said um, that Ripple will eventually lose the case. So the, the thing is, um, he says, if Ripple loses, this is from Coindesk, as I expect it will sooner or later, its defeat would be highly symbolic. And that's because being one of the largest cryptos, and being a publicly known case, it is very crucial for the crypto industry. If they lose, I think that all coins, all tokens, except for all cryptos besides Bitcoin, will actually be considered a security by the SEC. Um, one thing that's actually come up that doesn't favor Ripple uh, recently is that the CFTC chair actually admitted that uh, all coins except for BTC would actually fall under the SEC, whereas Bitcoin would fall under the CFTC. The CFTC has been fighting the SEC about that for a long time, but it seems like it, that's more favoring towards the SEC now. But the thing is about XRP is that like even though Kick and EOS and uh, Telegram are different from the Ripple case because they had an ICO, although the summary judgment's reasoning didn't really focus on the ICO, LBRY is very, very much like the Ripple case. Now, LBRY, to be fair, is a smaller coin and doesn't have quite the legal team, and they were in a much less favorable jurisdiction uh, because the SEC basically sued like a small player to get a precedent for a big player, and they found a judge in a district that was very, very sympathetic to what they were actually doing. So the thing is, like the LBRY case also did not have an ICO like Ripple, and like Ripple, one of the big arguments is that XRP had utility from the get-go. Now, obviously, ODL wasn't there when uh, XRP was created, but they did kind of, they, the blockchain did work. They had a DEX, so they argued it has utility. Well, uh, LBRY, that was also one of the main uh, arguments in LBRY's case. So the two main arguments in LBRY's case was like, they didn't have an ICO, and they their blockchain was already up and running, their app was already up and running, and 
right when you when, right when they created LBRY, you could actually use LBRY in their social media system. And in fact, many people did use it in their social media system. But despite that, the majority of people still bought LBRY on the open marketplace as an investment. Now that would apply to every single coin, including Ripple. Yes, I understand at this point, um, like, you know, at this point, there are some buys of XRP for ODL, but like when they first began to sell it, like ODL didn't exist, they did have the DEX and the DeFi, and I guess you could use it for that. But most people still bought it as an investment. And just like most people today still buy XRP in as an investment, because all you need to do is look over at XRP Twitter space or YouTube space, and everyone's shouting about, you know, $1,000 XRP or $10,000 XRP. So you can easily conclude that most people do not actually buy XRP for utility. They do buy XRP for investment purposes, but that's true on every other coin. And this lawyer says like, because the judge in all the other cases essentially use that logic to rule against the crypto, he thinks that XRP will lose on the same reasoning. Now, I don't necessarily believe that because they are in a different jurisdiction uh, with slightly different applicable rules. And the judge seems more favorable towards Ripple and XRP in this jurisdiction than the LBRY jurisdiction. But those two cases are actually very, very similar. And one could affect the other. But like I said, I give it a, about a 50-50 chance. Before the LBRY ruling, I would have given it a much higher chance. And also before the FTX thing and the CFTC commissioner basically saying that, you know, the SEC is right, everything besides Bitcoin's under their jurisdiction, I would have given it a higher chance. But now it's about a 50-50 chance. And I hope they actually rule in Ripple's favor. But what if they don't? What if Ripple actually loses the case? Well, the thing is, like, Ripple, the company, I think will be fine because Ripple can operate with or without XRP. Their software what was known as XCurrent, but now it's just part of uh, their whole suite. They can just continue to operate that suite and they can make money from that suite. So they don't actually need XRP to be profitable. It would be a huge, huge boost if it, uh, XRP was not a security, but um, they could actually just operate without the crypto and they would still be a very viable company because there are banks that actually use their software. That's one option, but that's not the option that they would actually prefer. The second option is they could move outside the United States. Now, the European Union and like Japan, they've already decided that a lot of cryptos actually aren't securities. So you could still use XRP in an ODL fashion there. And this would be better than the first option of just dropping XRP. But if you really look at it, you know, like a lot of the remittances and money transfers do involve USD. And you would kind of be blocked out from all of that if it was a security in the United States, because I don't think you can actually use securities for money transfers. And in that case, you would actually be blocked out from two of the world's major currencies and the ones that probably handle the most remittances being USD and the Chinese yuan. Now, the Chinese yuan is off the table. It's been off the table for a couple of years now because China's basically had a de facto ban on crypto for quite a while. But USD, if they muck that off the table, then you're basically like, you can't do remittances into China or remittances in the United States, which would take a huge part of the market away. So that's also not a very good option. Plus, like, you know, if you move outside the United States, if you want to do business within the United States, then it gets a little bit more tricky. And plus, like, the move would take some time. So that would be a big blow to XRP and Ripple as well. So that's not a great option, although I think better than the first option of just dropping XRP altogether. Now, the thing about F XRP being a security, I don't think that would actually kill the coin. I mean, you couldn't use it for ODL because of the whole you can't use securities for money, tra money transfer thing, I don't think. But you could actually use it still as just the ledger is for DeFi and uh, NFTs. So the thing is like, even if you chopped off ODL for XRP and you just use the ledger for DeFi and NFTs, you can, it would be like any of the other major L1s and would still have potential. So even if it was declared a security, it may not be, it won't probably be a death knell for XRP. You just can't use it for ODL and Ripple might actually um, separate itself from XRP, but the ledger would actually still exist. And um, despite it not having the, I guess, world domination potential that some of the XRP army thinks that it actually has, but I don't actually think it does, um, it still could be used like any other L1. So there is that. Now, the third option is they could appeal the decision, the summary judgment. And basically, you know, interestingly enough, um, Either Stuart Audley or James K. Filan, I forgot which one, actually said like an appellate court decision is actually much more important than the circuit court decision. I find that kind of interesting because 
that might signal that they're willing to appeal or they're getting ready to appeal if the summary judgment does not come in their favor. Um, and the thing is, like, I'm pretty sure the SEC and Gary Ginzer will appeal if the summary judgment goes against the SEC. Now, generally, like, appeals aren't that successful in this kind of case, but, um, and you have to do it within a very specific time period. Now, in an appeals case, you can't present new evidence. You have to work with the evidence already there. You have to, you have to like, convince the appellate court that the uh, original trial court uh, basically interpreted some of the uh, evidence wrong or like they interpreted the law wrong. And just like, um, I don't think LBRY went for appeal because they essentially didn't have any money because an appellate court generally costs more in terms of the fees than the uh, lower court. So I think the higher you move up the court, the more it actually costs. So LBRY just ran out of money. That won't be a problem for Ripple. So I do think that they will actually appeal and they might get it overturned. But if they lose the if they lose the original summary judgment, I really wouldn't hold my breath for the appeals court to actually overturn it. But that is an option. And I think uh, whichever side loses this, they will actually appeal. Now, if the SEC loses this, like, which I hope they do, all the, most other, I think, cryptos will actually gain, um, will actually, uh, will uh, also have some protection because they can just protect themselves in the same way, unless the appellate court overturns it. So the U.S. Uh, court system, for those of you that don't know, is divided into like three, uh, I guess, three tiers. You have the trial court, and then you have the appellate court, and then you have the Supreme Court. I don't know if the Supreme Court would actually hear the second appeal. I, I doubt it would because they don't accept too many, they don't accept that many cases and there's certain qualifications for the Supreme Court to actually accept the case. Um, so I think it might actually just be de uh, determined for good at the appellate level. And I do think whichever side loses will actually appeal. But I would guess that the original uh, judgment would actually stick. Now, the judge could also split it and say, like, it was a security then, it may not be a security now, and then, like, have some other exceptions, but I'm not really sure how that would work. But if they actually lose, I believe Ripple will appeal, and while they're appealing, they might actually make the moves to move to another country. That would be a pretty big blow to XRP, uh, because, you know, ODL does want USD to actually function because it doesn't require USD to function, obviously, but I mean, like so much of the money transfer goes through USD and they might be blocked out from that if um, it happens so that they are a security, but they could also appeal and hopefully they can actually win on appeal. But while that appeal is going on, that could take years and years. Um, the rest of the crypto industry has to suffer, but those are kind of like what, those are the kind of options they actually have. I overall definitely want them to win the case, but if they lose the case, they could either drop XRP and just let it be its own ledger for NFTs and DeFi, which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, I guess. Um, they could either move to another country or they could appeal the case and, uh, appealing the case, I think will be probably trapped in the news cycle for another who knows, like two years or so. So not really my preference, but maybe that would be the way they would want to go. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. Hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.